Hello and welcome to the next section, Creating Django Views. In this section, we will learn about defining API views, making HTTP requests to the API, working with GUI tools, Postman and others. Now we move on to the video, Defining API Views. In this video, we will learn to create and define Django views. Open the views.py file. The highlighted lines show the initial code for this file with just one important statement and a comment that indicates we should create the views. Next, we will add some lines of code into views.py file. The lines show the new code that creates a JSON response class and declares two functions game list and game detail in the views.py file. We are creating our first version of the API and we use functions to keep the code as simple as possible. Then we will highlight the lines that show expressions that evaluate the value of the request.method attribute to determine the actions to be performed based on the HTTP verb. First HTTP verb that is, if request.method with get value. Next, else if request.method with post value. After that, we will go to game detail with request and primary key value. In that we will first highlight the HTTP verb, which is if request.method with get value. The second HTTP verb that is else if request.method with put value. Then the next else if request.method with delete value. The JSON response class is a subclass of the Django.HTTP with HTTP response class. The superclass represents an HTTP response with a string as content. The JSON response class renders its content into JSON. The class defines just declare the init method that created a REST framework dot renderers with JSON renderer instance and calls its render method to render the received data into JSON, save the return byte string and the content local variable. Then the code adds the content type key to the response header with application JSON as its value. Finally, the code calls the initializer for the base class with the JSON byte string and the key value pair added to the header. The code uses the CSRF exempt decorator in the two functions to ensure that the view sets a cross-site request forgery cookie. We do this to make it simple to test this example that doesn't represent a production-ready web service. We will add security features to our RESTful API later. When Django loads the appropriate view that will process the requests, it passes the HTTP request instance as the first argument to the view function. The view function has to return as an HTTP response instance, specifically a Django.HTTP with HTTP response instance. The game list function lists all the games or creates a new game. The function receives an HTTP request instance in the request argument. The function is capable of processing two HTTP verbs, get and post. The code checks the value of the request.method attribute to determine the code to be executed based on the HTTP verb. If the HTTP verb is get, the expression request.method with get value will evaluate to true and the code has to list all the games. The code will retrieve all the game objects from the database, use the game serializer to serialize all of them and return a JSON response instance built with the data generated by the game serializer. The code creates the game serializer instance with the many equals true argument to specify that multiple instances have to be serialized and not just one. Under the hoods, Django uses a list serializer when the many argument value is set to true. If the HTTP verb is post, the code has to create a new game based on the JSON data that is included in the HTTP request. First, the code uses a JSON parser instance and calls its pass method with a request as an argument to pass the game data provided as JSON data in the request and saves the results in the game data local variable. Then, the code creates a game serializer instance with the previously retrieved data and calls the isValid method to determine whether the game instance is valid or not. If the instance is valid, the code calls the save method to persist the instance in the database and returns a JSON response with the save data in its body and a status equal to status.http201 created, that is, 201 created. The game detail function retrieves, updates, or deletes an existing game. The function receives an HTTP request instance in the request argument and the primary key or identifier for the game to be retrieved, updated, or deleted in the PK argument. The function is capable of processing three HTTP verbs, get, put and delete. 
The code checks the value of the request.method attribute to determine the code to be executed based on the HTTP verb. No matter which is the HTTP verb, the function calls the game.objects.get method with the received PK as the PK argument to retrieve a game instance from the database based on the specified primary key identifier and saves it in the game local variable. In case a game with the specified primary key or identifier doesn't exist in the database, the code returns an HTTP response with its status equal to status.http 404 not found, that is, 404 not found. If the HTTP verb is get, the code creates a game serializer instance with game as an argument and returns the data for the serialized game in a JSON response that will include the default 200 OK status. The code returns the retrieve game serialized as JSON. If the HTTP verb is put, the code has to create a new game based on the JSON data that is included in the HTTP request and use it to replace an existing game. First, the code uses a JSON parser instance and calls its pass method with request as an argument to pass the game data provided as JSON data in the request and saves the results in the game data local variable. Then the code creates a game serializer instance with the game instance previously retrieved from the game database and the retrieved data that will replace the existing data, that is game data. Then the code calls the isValid method to determine whether the game instance is valid or not. If the instance is valid, the code calls the save method to persist the instance with the replaced values in the database and returns a JSON response with the save data in its body and the default 200 OK status. If the past data doesn't generate a valid game instance, the code returns a JSON response with a status equal to status.http 400 bad request, that is 400 bad request. If the HTTP verb is delete, the code calls the delete method for the game instance previously retrieved from the game database. The call to the delete method erases the underlying row in the games underscore game table, and therefore the game won't be available anymore. Then the code returns an HTTP response with a status equal to status.http 204 no content. After making the changes, save the file. Now we have to create a new Python file named urls.py in the games folder. Specifically, the games folder names it as urls.py file. The file has been created. The highlighted lines show the code for this file that defines the URL patterns that specifies the regular expressions that have to be matched in the request to run a specific function in the views.py file. The URL patterns list makes it possible to route URLs to views. The code calls the django.conf.urls with URL function with the regular expression that has to be matched with the view function defined in the views module as arguments to create a regex URL pattern instance for each entry in the URL patterns list. We will now save this file to keep the changes. We have to replace the code in the urls.py file in the games API folder. The file defines the root URL configurations and therefore we must include the URL patterns declared in the previously coded game's urls.py file. We will replace the selected code with the new code. The highlighted block of code shows the new code for the game's API urls.py file. Don't forget to save the file. Open the command prompt. The highlighted path command activated the virtual environment and the Django01 prefix is an indication that the virtual environment is successfully activated. Then we have activated the game's API folder because the manage.py file to launch the Django's development server exists in this folder. So now we can launch Django's development server to compose and send HTTP requests to our unsecure web API. We will definitely add security later. Execute the python manage.py command. The highlighted lines show the output after we execute the python manage.py command. The development server is listening at port 8000. With the python manage.py command, we will start Django development server and we will only be able to access it in our development computer. The command starts the development server in the default IP address, that is 127.0.0.1 localhost. It is not possible to access this IP address from other computers or devices connected on our LAN. Thus, if we want to make HTTP requests to our API from other computers or devices connected to our LAN, we should use the development computer IP address 0.0.0.0 for IPv4 configurations or double colon for IPv6 configurations as the desired IP address for our development server.
If we specify 0.0.0.0 as the desired IP address for IPv4 configurations, the development server will listen on every interface on port 8000. When we specify double colon for IPv6 configurations, it will have the same effect. In addition, it is necessary to open the default port 8000 in our firewalls and configure port forwarding to the computer that is running the development server. The Python manage.py command launches Django's development server in an IPv4 configuration and allows requests to be made from other computers and devices connected to our LAN. If you decide to compose and send HTTP requests from other computers or devices connected to the LAN, remember that you have to use the development computer's assigned IP address instead of local host. For example, if the computer's assigned IPv4 IP address is 192.168.1.106 instead of local host 8000, you should use 192.168.1.106 colon 8000.